guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm Primetime Phil. Today we're going to discuss a little bit about the Minnesota Vikings versus the Dallas Cowboys for this Sunday on Sunday Night Football, a game that's nationally televised and everybody will be watching. And after a nice bye week with some resting from people like Dak Prescott and Michael Gallup where he's finally practicing, we're not going to see all those guys all at once, but we are going to see our key guys, and I think that's the most important thing. So let's go over some of the game plans that Dallas are going to need to beat the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday Night Football. As the Dallas Cowboys defense goes into this game against the Minnesota offense, it's very easy to get caught up in the fact that they have a great running back in Dalvin Cook. The thing about this defense, which has been great for them, is that they have stopped the run in most parts other than in that New England game, where New England was able to kind of open it up and show what this Dallas defense is vulnerable to. The only thing is, is that the offense for Dallas has scored a lot of points, making those offenses of the other team one-dimensional and then stop running the ball. So I think that's going to be a very big key thing. And when you look at the pass part, you got to look at Minnesota's Kirk Cousins, and he's no exception when it comes to the whole pressure category. When you put pressure on a quarterback, his numbers drop dramatically because, of course, you're not giving him time to actually read the field. Kirk Cousins is definitely amplified in this stat because he drops to the very bottom of the league when pressure is put upon him or if there's even a blitz involved in general. So giving this guy no time to throw to these receivers, which are very qualified to catch the ball, very equivalent to what Dallas has, because of course we have Cooper banged up and of course Gallup out until a couple of weeks. So right now it's very equivalent because Thielen, the rookie, Osborne, they, they have been doing very good. So a very core, good core there. But when you look at that, you kind of have to counter what we have. We have a very good Trayvon Diggs making plays, Anthony Brown holding his own, and now guys like Boss Man Fat coming back, and I'm excited to see what he's capable of doing. I don't expect a lot from him. People will think that they're going to come in, he's going to take Anthony Brown's job. Well, I was one of those guys that wanted to get rid of Anthony Brown. The problem is, is that you don't have anybody to replace him. Oh, well, we got Boss Man Fat. He has not shown any kind of flashes in the actual preseason or any games that he was playing prior to that or training camps or anything. So to me, to expect him to just come in and, and be Trayvon Diggs, that is not going to happen. Um, so will he come in and make plays? I don't know because this is Dan Quinn's defense and anybody can make a play. And I think that's what I love about this defense is that when it comes to the NFL, we can smack anybody in the mouth. So let's talk about what the offense has to do against the Minnesota defense. So as we shift focus onto the offensive side of the ball for the Dallas Cowboys against the Minnesota defense, you really have to look at our quarterback, Dak Prescott. Now, coming off of a calf injury, it's very questionable, any of those injuries. Even when you look at the injury occurring, he was throwing off of his back foot for a game-winning TD, and he tweaks it. That's how calf injuries are. So if he comes back in full healthy after having the cast and boot already off by Monday, it all signs point to a green light that says Dak Prescott should play this Sunday. Now, this has been the year of the backups, so seeing Cooper Rush come into this game would be amazing to watch, but I don't think it's a great game to judge him off of because Minnesota does have a very formidable defense, and they're led by Kendrick, their linebacker, and it's amazing across the board when you look at it. Their defensive line can really match up against our offensive line. Their linebackers are really powerful, and they can go against a guy like Zeke. That's where you should see Tony Pollard have a very good game being elusive as he is and with the speed that he has. So their linebackers going against our, our, our Dak Prescott's mind and the uh, running backs in general should be a really good matchup. Even in their secondary, they got Patrick Peterson is like our dig where he kind of eliminates. Doesn't get all the interceptions, but he still can match man on man to somebody. So their defense across the board definitely matches up and it's going to be a very well balanced thing. Now, us having the bye week, is it a positive? It's a negative. You don't know what to say about that because sometimes teams can get complacent, but this team has not shown that this year. And giving the extra time for some rest was amazing. And, and even questioning the fact that you're bringing in Collins and should we put him in because Steele, that's amazing on Steele's part to even make this debate happen. It's like years ago in 2016 when Dak came in for Tony Romo, he played amazing. And by the time Romo came back, where you were questioning whether he was going to come in as a starter, and now you know history. So to see what this happens, I, I would say if you're going to keep Steele there, let's put Collins into the left guard position 
to Connor Williams kind of eliminating him. Tyler Biotta still being our weakling. I think if you surround Tyler with Collins and you have Zach Martin on the other side, I think that can't be nothing but positive. But will this coaching staff do it? Ugh, you know, it's very frustrating because Connor Williams doesn't have a contract next year. So to see him walk is very high possibility. So for us to keep giving him playing time, it's just kind of baffles me. And uh, so... Let's see how this offense goes against this defense because we all know that if this offense does not get ahead of the chains, this defense can stop you in your first look. So let's make them kind of, you know, the only time that they were really weak was against Kyle Murray, which ran around and kind of bought some time because this defense is very formidable with Zimmer at the helm. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Like always, I'm Primetime Phil, and I think it's going to be a heck of a matchup with the Dallas Cowboys versus the Minnesota Vikings. And by the end, I look for us to make those Vikings cry a little bit because of the brutal game that we're about to put upon them. Now, they've been into some tight battles with good offensive plays and good defensive plays, but have they gone against a team like the Dallas Cowboys where we can match up across the board and kind of run away with this? Now, will we? I don't think so. I think it'll be a close game, 27 to 24 maybe, but by the end of it, I really think this is going to be a good statement game because this is a very well-balanced team, and this is the type of game that we're going to have to play against in the playoffs if this team can honestly keep that push going towards it. So... Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button while you're at it. But don't forget to always make sure you ring that bell.